Tonight we got a really we got a, a double shot tonight, man. This is probably one of our great lineups tonight. Um, we're going to be featuring tonight uh, Pastor Steve Anderson in our first hour. Uh, he's uh, the famous pastor uh, who got tased and beaten down by Border Patrol. We're going to be hearing um, his experience, why they did what they did. Hear Pastor's view on America and what's wrong with America if he wants. Uh, in our second hour, people, we've got a real, uh, another great guest, uh, a young man by the name of James Lyle. If you're not familiar with James Lyle, uh, James Lyle is the organizer of the nation's largest tea party that occurred <coughs> when all the cities did the tea parties. We had between 20 and 25,000 in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, just 150 miles from my studio. Um, he's also the one behind tomorrow, uh, this Friday and Saturday's multiple city protests of media bias by uh, CNN, Communist Network News. Uh, they call it the Cable News Network this coming weekend. Um, uh, Georgia Tea Party Patriots have teamed up with concerned citizens in Atlanta and Chicago, the Chicago Bureau. Uh, Atlanta is the world headquarters of CNN. Uh, this protest uh, will begin tomorrow uh, in Georgia, Eastern Time at 10, uh, Chicago Time at 12. Uh, the protest uh, is also, we're so angry here in uh, Georgia, we're going to take it to a second day. It's also going to be occurring Saturday from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Uh, if you need more information, it's on my website, freedomfighterradio.net. Multiple city protests has a link, has contact information to the Tea Party, um, uh, people putting it on. Well, we're going to get right to our guests right now. Uh, we're going to be jo- we're joined right now with Pastor Steve Anderson. He's speaking out about his experience as he asserted his constitutional rights. Again, he was beaten and tased by the U.S. Border Patrol. Uh, Steve is the brave pastor, people, who stood up to the thugs known as the Border Patrol and DPS. Uh, he's going to give us a live account of his experience uh, uh, with the Border Patrol checkpoint outside of Yuma, Arizona. And all we can say is, hey, Border Patrol. We want to remind the Border Patrol that, hey, where you've tased our, this patriot was 50 miles south of where your checkpoint is. Perhaps you would patrol the border instead of inside the United States, and you would get more work done. The thugs, Border Patrol, decided to surround our guest's uh, car to intimidate him in relinquishing his God-given, unalienable rights to privacy, and an unwarranted search and seizure occurred for this outrageous act of questioning the thugs. And standing up for his rights, the thugs called in another group of thugs, the Arizona Department of Public Safety. These thugs proceeded to destroy Pastor Anderson's car by breaking the windows and then tasing him, an unarmed man, and grinding his face into the glass they broke after throwing him to the ground. Clearly, the goal of these thugs is to make an example of individuals who question authority, which I want to remind you. His most patriotic thing you can do is to question authority. With that being said, I want to welcome to our show. Uh, your calls are also welcome if you want. I know we got streamers and a few in the, in the chat room. Uh, link on freedomfighterradio.net for your streamers. Uh, we will take your calls in a, as well. Uh, Pastor, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, first question. Okay, I mean, I've seen these. Uh, I'm looking at your picture now on my site. I got, you know, it looks like a. a the blood in the middle of your forehead it looks like they uh, a bullet hole in your head. But I mean, it looks pretty. Uh, they look like they roughed you up pretty bad. How's your injuries doing right now? First question. Well, I, you know, it's been a couple months now, so I'm totally recovered. I mean, I'm gonna have some pretty gnarly scars on my head for the rest of my life. But other than that, I'm pretty much recovered. Well, Pastor, before we go on, let me ask you: If you went back in time, would you do it again? Absolutely. And not only that, but, you know, I have been forced to go through some of these checkpoints again since this happened because my business causes me to travel all over, you know, the country. And I've already had a few confrontations where I basically went through a Border Patrol checkpoint and asked me, for example, recently I was in Texas, they asked me, 
hey, uh, where are you coming from today, sir? And I said, you know what, that's none of your business. Mm. I said, that's my business where I'm going. And the guy just kind of looked a little startled and perplexed, and then he just said, all right, have a good day. So if I had it to do over again, I would definitely do it again, because if we don't stand up now for our Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights, it's only going to keep getting worse and worse. So we got to draw the line and say, wait a minute, we ought to be able to freely travel in this country without having to stop and show our papers and prove that we're not doing anything wrong. We should be guilt. We should be innocent until proven guilty. Absolutely, uh, the Fourth Amendment clearly states that uh, we are to be secure in our persons and our property. And I understand uh, you're also, uh, besides being married, you're also a father. How many children are you a father of, Steve? Uh, five children we have. So obviously, you're, you're not only concerned for your personal freedom of you and uh, your wife. You're also concerned, without a doubt, the, the future of your children. It... Exactly. And, you know, if we don't stand up for our freedoms in this generation, our children aren't even going to live in a free America. Now, Pastor, why don't you tell us a little background about you? You look pretty young, I guess, uh, I forgot your age. You're in your 30s, I believe, about 35? No, I'm actually 27. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess the, the, the being a big, well, I'm sorry, Pastor. Uh, forgive me. Can I? Can I? Forgive me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but no, the the pictures do make you look a little older with the blood and you know and all that you know, <laughs> being roughed up. So. <laughs> uh, well, that, yeah. My background is, you know, I was born and raised in Sacramento, California, mm-hmm. and you know, I basically moved to Phoenix, Arizona, about three and a half years ago in order to start a Baptist church. And, you know, I started this church from scratch, and, you know, here we are three and a half years later. we got a great group of people, and uh, basically I run a fire alarm business in addition to pastoring. I have a full-time paid assistant at the church that kind of takes a lot of that load off of me. Right. And then I run a fire alarm business in order to uh, make a living. I don't get a paycheck from the church. And so my business operates in several states, which causes me to do a lot of traveling. And to be honest with you, I started doing a lot of traveling about three years ago, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't until about a year and a half ago that I started to, uh, you know, not answer questions at these checkpoints. Because for the first about year and a half of my travels, they'd ask me questions, and they would sometimes even want to search my car, and I've even let them. I mean, I popped the trunk, I popped the hood, I did whatever they told me to do, but about a year and a half ago, I started to think about this and said, wait a minute, you know, this is really invasive. You know, I'm going through these checkpoints three or four times a week in my business travels. Why do I have to tell them where I'm coming from and where I'm going? Why do I have to tell them, you know, what's in the trunk or what I do for a living? Why are they searching me? Here I am, just an innocent person, just a business owner, and I've never been arrested before in my life, you know, until now, that is. I've never had any any run-ins like this. I've never, you know, been a criminal And yet I'm having to go through this again and again. And so about a year and a half ago, I made the decision to stop answering questions and not to allow anyone to search me without a warrant. Now, I've I've had this happen probably at least ten times where I pulled up to the checkpoint, asserted my rights, you know, that is after they tried to interrogate me or search me. And after about 30 seconds, they usually just let me go. Right. The worst time before this was in New Mexico there was a time when they held me for 27 minutes. But then after 27 minutes, they just said, oh, well, we have better things to do, you know, than to play this game with you. And they let me go. And I'm thinking to myself, who's playing the game? I'm just trying to get home from work. And, you know, you're you're putting me through all this. And not only that, but during that 27 minutes in New Mexico, they actually told me that I was a terrorist. No, what what was the uh, definition of, or what was the defining characteristics um, attributes that they, uh, did they tell you why you were a terrorist? Well, you know, he said, he said, right now, I'm pretty sure you're a terrorist. And I've got that video on YouTube as well of the New Mexico encounter. And you, you can see for yourself if you watch that video, he says, well, right now, I'm pretty sure you're a terrorist. Right. But he never really explained that. I said, what? You know, you're pretty sure I'm a terrorist just because I'm standing up for my rights as an American? And he said, well, you know, I think you're trying to smuggle some kind of contraband through our checkpoint. Now, what's so silly about that is, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but isn't the definition of smuggling carrying something illegally from one country to another? 
these checkpoints aren't on an international border. And so if I were smuggling, wouldn't I be crossing some kind of an international border? You know, that New Mexico checkpoint was 75 miles from the border. Absolutely. And, Pastor Steve, I don't know if you're aware of this, um, but the Supreme Court, in fact, people, if you Google Constitution Free Zone, (laughs) the Supreme Court has unconstitutionally ruled that anything, area within 100 miles of the border that your rights do not apply. Now, we had a, uh, from Checkpoint USA, uh, Terry Brassey. I'm, uh, you might be familiar with Terry Brassey. He uh, does similar things. Um, uh, he's also uh, been um, not as roughed up as you, uh, but um, has uh, had confrontations as well. Um, Constitution-free zones, your Fourth Amendment rights, your your freedoms do not apply within 100 miles of the border. Uh, this is a ruling of the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court may have that ruling, but that is not constitutional. And anything that's not constitutional, we have no ethical or moral obligation to uh, obey them. Am I not right? You're absolutely right. Well, and, you know, the, these constitution-free zones, as you know, as they've been called on the ACLU's website, it's ridiculous. Two-thirds of the U.S. population lives within 100 miles of some international border, whether it be the you know, the ocean or whether it be Canada or Mexico. So that's two-thirds of the population of the United States that's living in this area. And, you know, not only that, but the Constitution itself, the original document, is sitting in a Constitution-free zone in the National Archives. So how ironic is that? And, you know, they can make a law that says, well, we have the right to search you without a warrant, even though the Fourth Amendment says no. But it's like you said, if it's Republican, repugnant to the Constitution, that law doesn't apply. And and not only that, but, you know, they could make a law that says that there's no breathing allowed, but that doesn't mean that we can't breathe. So, you know, governments have always throughout history tried to take away people's rights, and today we're seeing our government, one step at a time, encroach upon, you know, our constitutional God-given rights, such as freedom of movement within the country, you know, freedom from unreasonable searches and seizures, the freedom of speech, the freedom of assembly. And, you know, just seems like one by one they're taking them away from us. And a lot of people don't really care because maybe they don't think the Fourth Amendment's that important. Right. But if you think about it, if the Fourth Amendment doesn't matter, what's to stop them from taking away our First Amendment rights, which probably are very important to most people, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and, you know, we see what the government's doing with torture when the Eighth Amendment clearly says, you know, cruel and unusual punishment shall not be inflicted. And yet, you know, we're seeing torture being held up by both, you know, Barack Obama and the previous administration. So, what's okay. next? Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what's next. I'm not sure if you heard it, but uh, since the time of your incident, there is um, a pastor, don't have his name in front of me, um, it seems like every week it's getting worse and worse. I mean, there is a, uh, there's cl- clearly an attack on our freedom of worship. Now, my attitude, Steve, is I'm not going to attack anyone's right not to believe, so they don't need to attack our right to believe. There was a pastor in San Diego uh, in this last month that was having a Bible study, and, of course, they, him and his wife were raided. I'm sure you read about that one, uh, for having a Bible study, uh, told that they would have all these fines. They had to get these uh, sidewalk permits and such, and then and of course we know about the young uh, uh, pro-life teenagers out there on the sidewalks being body slammed, tackled like football players, uh, having their face also ground into the concrete uh, by uh, by the fascist police state. And yet America remains silent. Mainstream media, uh, communist network news, CNN, uh, Fox News, they, don't, they didn't they didn't cover these events. Let me ask you, Steve, uh, how much coverage did you get on your incident by Fox News or CNN? Well, here's the way it happened. When this when this event first took place, you know, I had all the local TV crews, you know, coming over to my house and interviewing me, and then it just seems like within a few days it all just disappeared, all the media attention. Well, then when the actual footage came out of, of the, the tasing and, the you know, the screaming and all those uh, pictures of the bloody, uh, you know, broken glass on my door frame, when all that came out, you know, all of a sudden there was another media buzz, but it was mainly all the local news and other, you know, local stations across the country. But it was weird because in one day, 
I had several major, you know, nationwide like news shows get in touch with me. Right. And they all, you know, set up interviews and had me scheduled to be on these nationwide news programs. And then just all at once, they all just canceled, like on the same day. Well, yeah. And I mean, so I, there, I was, there was, was a nice. Yeah, I believe that was pressure from the Barack Obama administration. I mean, they, Barack Obama, I believe, is behind a lot of this, and it's not uh, a wild-eyed theory. I mean, we've seen what he's done with the the, the Black Panthers, uh, intimidating voters with baseball bats, and uh, his Justice Department, uh, give, uh, you know, dropping all charges on that. Now, it's it's very clear that this president is clearly um, does not have the foundations of America at heart. Uh, Steve, I mean, do you um, see it the way I do and the way Alex Jones does? I mean, Alex Jones came out with that great movie, uh, uh, The Obama Deception. Um, how do you feel about um, what we're facing? Do you feel this administration is – I know the last one I wasn't too keen on either, but do you feel this administration is, is, the, is, is probably in your lifetime the most ungodly administration that we've ever seen? Absolutely. You know, and, and – I, I do agree with, you know, I saw the film, The Obama Deception. It was a great film. And I think the best thing about it is it helps people to understand, you know, that there's really been no difference between the George W. Bush administration and the Obama administration. Obama is just taking it to the next level. You know, Obama is basically continuing the same program of George W. Bush. He's just taking it to another level or down a level, I guess you could say. But – Obviously, you know, I consider Barack Obama to be the most wicked president that our country's ever seen. And and before him, the most wicked was George W. Bush. And these people that are being, you know, put out there for us to vote on, you know, we think we have some kind of a choice, but we really don't because I really don't think McCain would have been any better either. And it seems that the, neither the Republicans nor the Democrats seem to represent the American people's best interests anymore. It seems like both of them are just for a huge government, gigantic deficit spending. Because, sure, Obama's got the stimulus, but remember Bush had the bailout shortly before he left office. Right. And so both parties are just basically draining us of our money, stealing our freedoms from us. You know, you look at the Patriot Act under the Bush administration, but all those same policies and all those same ideas are going forward with Obama – and people actually thought they were voting with they were voting for change. What a joke. I mean, they're voting for the same thing. If they wanted to vote for change, they should have voted for Ron Paul right. or somebody who was actually different or Pastor than Chuck what Baldwin. we've been having. Or in my case, or Pastor Chuck Baldwin. Exactly. You know, and, and I vote I voted for Chuck Baldwin in the general election. Oh, it's two of them. You know, I, I I voted for Ron Paul in the primary. You know, but then of course he dropped out of the race. And uh, chose not to run as an independent, which I was I was disappointed about that. But you know, I voted for Chuck Baldwin. I'm not going to vote for McCain. And the, people say he's the lesser of two evils, but you know what? It's not even true. I mean, they're it's they're both both exactly the same. Oh, well, I mean, the way I, yeah. The way I look at it, Pastor, is it's basically the same package. It's like if you if you were going to mail me um, a package from Arizona, you could send it to me in a brown UPS truck. Or you could send it in a red, white, and blue FedEx truck. One big, one may get here quicker than the other, and the vehicle may be different. The delivery system may be different, but in the end, I w we will get. I would get the same package, and that's the way I see it with both parties. Exactly right. And not only that, I think it's almost better that Obama got elected because it's better the devil we know than the devil we don't know. At least now, Christians and and conservatives recognize that there's a problem whereas it seems like they were just lulled to sleep during the George W. Bush administration, thinking that, you know, a Republican can do no wrong. Well, and, I mean, how far have we degenerated in the last eight years as a nation when we can sit here and, and, I, and I talk to my conservative friends and my Republican friends, and they think that torture is acceptable. Oh, yeah, I, I, they, I saw the survey. I mean, it's unbelievable to me. Right, the survey that majority of churchgoers uh, support torture. Um, and, and on the other side of the break, I want to get your thoughts on abortion. Um, but, with, but I want you, if you can, you share us. Let's get back to that day. Uh, what was the day that this occurred again? Uh, the day that you April were April uh, fourteenth. April fourteenth. 
can you describe us that that day? Uh, you you get up, you put on your clothes, you know, you brush your teeth, yada yada, comb your hair, kiss your wife goodbye. Uh, you walk out the door. Tell us uh, the events of that uh, day, if you don't mind. And it is okay, Pastor, to drop names if you still feel on a show. If you want to drop names of the border agents that brutalize you, uh, we're not regulated by the SEC, so the SEC has no control of what I do and don't do. So uh, go ahead. Tell us the, uh, the the chain of events that day, sir. Well, you know, first let me drop a few names. I like that idea. And, and they, or, by you the know, way, you can drop phone numbers, too, if you want. The, uh, the Border Patrol agent who was the one who slammed my head into the broken glass. And, you know, this is based on documents that I've received from Border Patrol. The one who slammed my head into the broken glass was Agent Spoonamore. That was his name. And then the guy who tased me repeatedly for a total of 20 seconds of, uh, you know, pure electricity, according to their report, that's what they're claiming, you know, 20 seconds of taser, was uh, Officer Jay Mitchell. He's the one that you see in the video saying that I'm being arrested for failure to obey him right now. But just to give you a feel for that day, you know, I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning in Bakersfield, California, and I was throughout the day, you know, in Bakersfield, in the Los Angeles area, in San Diego, and then I'm driving home after a long day of work, you know, from San Diego to Phoenix, and it's 9.30 at night. I'm still about a little over two hours from home. So it's been a long day. And I pull into this checkpoint like I've done hundreds of times. And as soon as I pull in, boy, they, they start, you know, hitting me with the questions. I didn't answer any of the questions. I just politely said, can I please go? Can I go on my way? Can I please go? Well, I hear a guy say this to his, to his buddy. You know, there's all these Border Patrol agents there. One of them says, hey, I sent him to secondary because he's got a camera. <clears throat> Okay, well, then, then uh, you know, a little later, because they were upset that I wouldn't answer the questions, so then right after I hear the guy say that, then a different guy walks up to me and says, oh, uh, sir, you need to go to the secondary inspection area for a search because our dog alerted us to your vehicle that you have either drugs or a body. So it's funny. I overhear them saying, you know, oh, send him to secondary. He's got a camera. And then all of a sudden when they talk to me, it's all about this dog alerting to my vehicle. So I asked him, I said, well, what does that mean? I said, what did the dog do? Well, they wouldn't tell me. And, they, you know, they ushered the dog away really fast. Right. And I kept asking them to bring the dog out and show me or at least explain to me what happened. They wouldn't give me any information about it. They just said, all you need to know is that the dog alerted. And so that gives us probable cause to search your vehicle. And I said, look, I'm an American citizen. I don't have drugs. I don't have a human being. I have not crossed any border. I'm going from San Diego to Phoenix. And I said, I want to go on my way. Let me go home. And, you know, they, they're already running my plate. They're quoting my street address. You know, they, they pretty much knew who I was from running the plates. So, you know, we basically had this standoff for about an hour. And after a little over an hour, they call out the Arizona State Police, the DPS, you know, and the DPS shows up and says, you're under arrest to me. Now, what I find funny about this is that if the Border Patrol truly had the right to search my vehicle like they claim, why did they need to call in the state police? You know, why did they have to call in the state police to arrest me on this trumped-up charge, which was basically blocking the lane? It, you know, sounds, to me, it sounds to me like the do they need a new dog. I mean, they what? They spend twenty five to thirty thousand dollars for drug dogs, okay, of taxpayer money. And if the dog's not doing its damn job, well, then the dog needs to be put to sleep or um, uh, adopted out. But the bottom line is, it don't sound like the dog is doing its job. Well, well you know, what, but that's, that's assuming that's assuming that they were telling the truth. Well, the dog I'm being sarcastic. I'm being sarcastic. Right. The yeah. dog, you know, the I dog mean, obviously was a bluff. But go ahead. That, that's what I think. You know, who knows? But Personally, I don't think the dog alerted, because if it did, why wouldn't they have told me what that meant or brought it back out and demonstrated? Well, you know, the officer is telling me I'm under arrest. I'm asking him what I'm under arrest for. He's giving me different answers. He's saying all these confusing things, and he pretty much just says, well, look, you're coming out of the car one way or the other. We're going to search your car one way or the other. Why not just let us do it? And I told him, I said, look, I said, if you're going to search my car, you're going to search my car but I'm not going to give you permission to do it. If you're going to break my window and violate my rights, then go ahead. But you know what? I am not consenting to this. I'm not opening this door and letting you in. 
you know, I am protecting my vehicle right now. And no. so I'm going to sit here, and if you, if you break in, you break in. That's your problem. But I'm not going to give you permission to do it. <laughs> now, do you have the copy, or are you familiar with the card that the Border Patrol has? Because there's a card that states what they can and can't do at a checkpoint. And if I'm not mistaken, there's nothing in the law that required you to roll down your window. I mean, uh, all, all the way. And they were clearly, clearly out of line on this. Do you have that uh, copy of that card, or are you able to read it? If not, I understand. You know, I've, I've, I don't have a copy of the card, but they, they, they showed me that card when I was in New Mexico in that 27-minute stop. And I read half of it out loud, you know, on that video. But then the other half basically goes on to say that, you know, in order to take this any further, they must have a warrant. They must have a probable cause, something that's causing them to suspect that I'm in the country illegally, that I'm violating immigration laws, which really they had no way to suspect that. I mean, think about it. Even if the dog did alert that there were drugs in my trunk, does that really mean that the drugs came from Mexico? No, because I was on an east to west highway in the United States. You know, and so they had no probable cause to to think that I was breaking immigration laws. And and of course, after they broke my windows, they did search my car. And guess what they found when they searched my car? What's that? Nothing illegal. Nothing of illegal. Well, Pastor, no, of about- course not, because you know I've never been arrested. I'm not a criminal. Well, Pastor, we're about to go on a break. I got one quick question. Being a pastor and a man of God that preaches salvation through Jesus Christ, where do you stand on the Second Amendment? You know, I stand very strongly on the Second Amendment. I own two guns, and I think that every American should own a gun. Even Jesus Christ himself, when he walked on this earth, told his disciples to have a sword. And, and he, said, if you don't, he said, if you don't have a sword, if you have two coats, he said, sell one of your coats and buy a sword. Absolutely. With, so, that, we'll be, with that, Pastor, we'll be right back talking to Pastor Steve Anderson, beaten and tased by the fascist police state here in America. Not Russia, not China, but the USSA. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Freedom Fighter Radio Show on the Freedom Fighter Radio Network. Jim will be right back after these messages. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the information that detail the real news between the lines of propaganda about government policies and the true relationship we all have with coercive governments. Learn the true condition of our economy, innovations and technological breakthroughs in energy, health, computer science, and space travel. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media, the media that is so last century. Corporate media has evolved into nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but we now have a fantastic alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com provides constant news updates on the issues that affect our lives in the most important ways. Our liberty and our property are under constant attack, and FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda while encouraging the participation of our readers. Join us at FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com, where the revolution between the ears has already matured. Benjamin Franklin once said, Anyone willing to trade liberty for security deserves neither liberty nor security. Now, Mercer Films brings you Uncivil Liberties, a political thriller ripped from today's headlines. Domestic spying, wiretapping, government chipping, and more. People should look one another in the eye before they go killing for causes. Uncivil Liberties, the movie that will transport you to a society where the government monitors the moves of every citizen in the name of national security. The whole country's on a bus. A crazy driver. Passengers can't get hold of the wheel. We're all going to go over the cliff. Go to uncivilliberties.com to receive your full-length feature on DVD for only thirteen ninety-five. That's uncivilliberties.com to view the movie trailer, read reviews, and purchase the DVD. The enemy of my enemy is my ally. Uncivilliberties.com, because in this world, liberty is all that we have, and we must take it back. Purchase a copy today at uncivilliberties.com. Hi, this is Jim of Freedom Fighter Radio, and I want to tell you about the United American Freedom Foundation. 
www.uaff.us. There you will find the answers to the following questions. Will the U.S. economy collapse? What is weather modification? What are chemtrails? What is HARP? Is the Federal Reserve federal? Are vaccinations safe? What is depleted uranium? What is the real death count in Iraq? Is America a police state? What is the real ID? What is the SPP and NAU? Are militias good? Will martial law be ordered and enforced? Will war come to America? That's www.uaff.us, bringing you the most up-to-date patriot news and news from around the world. America's number one free open source for alternative news, connecting American patriots. Show with your host, Jim, the Freedom Fighter Sokoviac. Now, back to the Freedom Fighter. All right, people, this is Jim. And we're talking about the war on terror in the Constitution. Our guest for uh, this first hour is uh, Pastor Steve Anderson. Don't go anywhere. Coming up in the second hour, we're going to be having James Lyle, the organizer of the nation's largest tea party that occurred uh, a few weeks ago. Talking about the upcoming multi-city protest against uh, CNN beginning tomorrow morning in Chicago and Atlanta, Georgia. I'll be at, I'll be on location in Atlanta both days if you want to come out and meet me. And uh, uh, we got our permits. Uh, we're coming. Uh, um, got our permits. We got our authorization for the bullhorns. I do want to give a quick a couple quick announcements real quick before we get back to our guests. Uh, this show is being brought to you in part by www.silverlungs.com your number one source for colloidal silver generators, and also um, freemarketunderdog.com. Buy it now at freemarketunderdog.com. Get your uh, Don't Tread on Me t-shirts, which we're giving away uh, one every week here on the show. Uh, again, tomorrow morning, beginning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, downtown Atlanta at the Communist Network News, uh, we will uh, be protesting against the media bias of Communist Network News uh, with other patriots. I want to encourage you to be there. If, you, if you're in, up in Illinois, Chicago area, uh, join, uh, join there. If you need more information, email and even phone number contacts, uh, you can go to freedomfighterradio.net. Uh, just search multiple city protests of media bias, and uh, it should pull it up. Uh, with that, uh, we got. I'm joined by my co-host who joined us a little late, uh, so I'll dock him. Actually, I can't dock him because uh, we don't get paid to do this. But I can tell you what you can do. If you like this show, uh, we can use your donations. As I'm a full-time activist, uh, uh, we're, we got a, a, a plan right now. It's called Go 300. We're looking for 300 patriots in America or the world uh, that would commit to $10 a month to Freedom Fighter Radio. That's right. Uh, I know some people can say, Jim, you need money to pay your bills. You're right. My light bill, my food bill, uh, my Internet expenses, and the ability to travel and speak out and organize an act, uh, activism across the country. Uh, Go 300. If you'd like to become part of it, email freedomfighterradio at comcast.net. As I've committed my life to fighting for sovereignty, truth, and freedom full-time. I've been doing this for 31 years, doing it full-time for a couple. Uh, can use your support. We're really hurting. Uh, with that, Ken, uh, welcome to the show. Ken, I know you caught some of the... Uh, description of our guest. Uh, what's your thoughts of this, uh, Ken? You still got me muted? No, you're there. What, what's your thoughts on this, Ken? Go ahead. What I can't understand is the dog. I always thought they trained the dog for one event, not multiple events, where and because it confuses a dog. Uh, that's what got my attention when he said the dog said he had either person or drugs in there, you know? Well, actually, Ken, I do have to correct you know, as former police officer. The dogs are, that are trained for drugs also are trained to uh, uh, smell uh, cadavers, uh, dead bodies. So, um, but I, I think it was a bluff. I'm not think. We know it's a bluff. We could see what they did to the pastor. I mean, clearly, uh, uh, this is clearly a provocation. This is. I mean, this is an example, one of many. Uh, 
that is showing that this, uh, this government clearly has no regard for the safety of American citizens, uh, we, which we saw uh, a few years back on 9-11. Yeah. Okay, you answered my question. I was just curious. Okay, no problem. Well, Pastor, uh, go, go ahead and share us more about that day. Um, okay, so they, they, uh, they search your vehicle. They don't find anything. Uh, um, well, they, let's, uh, let's, let's back up a little bit because you know, the search is, a, is after they uh, brutalized me. Mm-hmm. But just to, just to give you a picture of the most important moment here, okay, they basically told me I'm under arrest. They gave me some confusing, you know, conflicting things that I'm under arrest for. And then, you know, the guy pulls a little note card. This is uh, Officer Jones with the DPS. He pulls a little cheat sheet out of his pocket and begins to read me my rights, but he jumbles them up and leaves parts out. You know, I had it memorized more just from just from hearing it on TV as a kid. You know, this guy's got the cheat sheet in front of him, and he jumbled up my rights, okay? Right, your Miranda, and he, right? You know, my Miranda, exactly. You know, he puts that away, and basically they said, you know, we're going to search your car one way or the other. I said, well, I'm not going to give you permission to do it. You know, do what you got to do. So they basically led me to believe that they were going to break out my passenger window. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, passenger window, a couple hundred bucks, but it's, you know, it's worth it. I need to stand up for my rights here and so forth. What's a few hundred bucks when it comes to our freedom in America? So I'm sitting here, and they start tapping away with a little hammer on that passenger window, tapping and tapping and tapping. Well, then there are two Border Patrol agents to my left, okay, standing right in my line of sight. They didn't have anything in their hands or anything. And they're saying to me, close your eyes. There's going to be glass. You know, cover up your eyes. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to cover my eyes because I don't want to get glass in my eye. So I put my face in my hands and kind of lean forward. So you got to picture me. Eyes closed, lean forward, face in my hands. Well, what I didn't know was that there was another Border Patrol agent hiding at the back of my car. And he had the baton behind his back. Okay. I've seen this on the, you know, the extended uh, view of the surveillance video. Right. On a more extended view, I've seen he's, you know, standing at the back of the car kind of with the baton out of sight, okay? So I didn't see this coming at all. I'm expecting them just to break my passenger window, unlock the car, and, you know, basically cuff me or whatever they're going to do, and then search the vehicle. Well, once I have my eyes closed and my face in my hands, next thing I know, both windows are breaking the one right beside my head and the passenger window, and instantly glass comes flying at me, my eyes are closed, and boom, I'm tased. Okay. Now, the way this taser works, you know, they hit you with these two little metal projectiles with with like a fish hook on the end of them that stick into your flesh, and then they have wires going back to the taser. So they can basically keep you electrified for as long as they want. They can just keep holding down that trigger and keep pulling the trigger and increasing the duration of the 50,000 volts of electricity. Well, the moment that that electricity hits you, you are paralyzed. You can't move your arms. You can't move your legs. You have no control over your limbs. You are completely paralyzed. And that's why in the video that you've seen, you'll notice that there's a lot of silence where I'm just trying to even scream, but I'm unable to do so because you're paralyzed. So the moment that that taser hit me, my eyes popped open in shock, and, you know, I saw my camera, which was setting up, it was just kind of setting on the dash. I saw it go flying through the air and slam shut, and that's why the video cuts out. But I'm basically just electrified, totally paralyzed. My hands popped away from my face when I got hit with the taser. I was trying to pull my hand back over my face because glass was flying, but, the, you know, I couldn't even do that because I was completely paralyzed. Well, next thing I know, a hand comes from the left, grabs my head, and slams it into the remaining broken glass shards that were left from my driver's side window being busted out. Right. My head is slammed into that glass and just kind of just ground into it and held there for an extended period. The electricity did not stop during this whole time. And, you know, a picture that you may want to see if you haven't seen it already, and I encourage anybody to look at this photo, there's a picture that the DPS put out, and it's all over the Internet, but it's a picture showing the broken, jagged glass edge on my driver's side door, 
and you'll see one part of it is just drenched in blood in the shape of my head. That's where my head was slammed into that, you know, that jagged edge. And it, it's a pretty gruesome picture. And if you notice, the wounds on my head are all kind of right in a row, kind of in one part of my head. That's because that's, those are all from when I was shoved into the broken glass shards on the door frame. And that's why the, the wounds are in the exact shape of my door frame. So I'm held there for a while. Next thing I know, the door swings open, and I'm rolled out onto the ground. Keep in mind, the electricity is not stopping this entire time. I'm in excruciating pain from this taser. And I'm on the ground. A Border Patrol agent steps on my head and just holds my head down with his boot. It felt like all his weight was on my head. So I'm just pinned down under this guy's boot, electricity flowing through my body at 50,000 volts. And I'm just asking myself, what do I have to do to get these people to stop? I mean, I'm, I'm not resisting. Why are they doing this to me? I haven't lifted a finger. I haven't threatened anyone. I haven't, you know, gotten physical at all. I was just sitting there with my eyes closed like they told me to. And why are they beating me? Why are they electrifying me? So I stopped screaming because I was thinking to myself, well, maybe they're waiting for me to go silent. So I went silent because I was just trying to do anything to get them to stop tormenting me. So finally the electricity stops and, you know, they're standing on my head. Uh, somebody else cuffs my hands behind my back. They finally take their foot off my face, and I hear a chorus of uh, Border Patrol voices saying, get up, get up, stand up, stand up. And uh, I kind of staggered to my feet with their help. Blood gushing out of the side of my head, and they led me away, cuffed to the Border Patrol trailer. Once I got inside the trailer, they set me down inside of a, in a desk chair, you know, I'm cut by my back, and, and right. conveniently, because you've seen a little bit of that footage. Right, I've seen it, yeah. But you know what? We're trying to get the whole footage, because they only gave us a couple minutes of the footage. Right. I was I mean, in that trailer for 40 minutes, and they were, while I was in that trailer, they were laughing at me, making fun of me, razzing me. Let me give you some of the quotes of exactly what they oh, were feel, saying. Oh, no, feel, feel free, feel free. I, this is what they said. Go ahead. Oh, you're not so tough now. You didn't think we were going to search you, did you? Well, I guess we did get to search you. And this is what they said. You're not going to put this on YouTube, are you? Because you lost this time. We won this time, so you're not going to be putting this one on YouTube. Oh, no, I, I, I'm disappointed. I thought I was going to get to be on YouTube. But, hmm. you know, you lost this time. And, I mean, just making fun of me, razzing right. me, laughing at me. And how hardened do you have to be? You just beat the fire out of somebody. They've got blood gushing from their head. Right. And you're laughing at them and having fun with it. I mean, well, that's pretty it, sick, isn't it? Well, yeah, absolutely. Pastor, I'm going to take full responsibility for what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to give me the number uh, in an email, to, um, or unless you have it now. If you don't, you can give it to me later. Uh, to the phone number, uh, the primary office responsible, uh, you know, because I want to put the phone number out. I think that it is time that we, you know, you know the bottom line is, you know, if they want to screw with the American citizens, I think it's time that, you know, we, we strike back uh, and we can do this peacefully at this. You know, if they want to taser American citizens, violate and sodomize us of our rights, then I think what we should do is we should launch a national campaign on the Border Patrol, uh, call their phone numbers up, and it's not phone harassment as long as you do it one time and if they ask you not to call, you don't call again, at least not from that same number, you know, you, you know, you mean you can call from different numbers, but I think uh, thousands of Americans. I don't know if, why anyone has not thought of this. I mean, I mean, you're busy, uh, you know, running your church, raising a family, and running your business, but I don't know why any, any of these other people haven't thought about this. Uh, I think we should launch a, a national phone campaign to, to uh, basically uh, tie up the communi communication lines of the border, U.S. Border Patrol until they come clean with a full video that you are trying to obtain. And if they don't like it, well, it's about time they feel the wrath of the American people and even a housewife can fight back by making a, one phone call to United States Border Patrol. If every patriot that did that, that saw your video, um, uh, we, would, we would tie up their phone lines and we would get results, Pastor. Right. And, and, and you know what? I've still not even got my camcorder back. I mean, the footage that I have from my camcorder was given to me on a DVD. Mm. It was sent to me through my attorney. I still don't have my $400 camcorder. 
Well, let me ask you, Pastor. They're holding on, and I've asked for it 20 times, and, and other people have called and asked hmm. why I wasn't getting it, and I still don't have it. I had to go buy a new one. Is there a phone number that you can give out that we can uh, – um, yeah, I'm not on my pen. Um, is there a phone number that you can give us that can uh, – if people you want know, to I don't, call? I don't have a phone number, but, I mean, obviously it's just as simple as just a quick Google search. Right. And you know, saw, Border well, which, Patrol. Yeah, but which office And also Arizona, also Arizona Department of Public Safety also. Well, I want to you know, they, they need to hear – they need to hear what people think about this well, and I wanna, that they're way out of bounds. Well, I want to encourage everybody that's listening to this on a stream, everybody in the chat, anybody archiving this, I want to encourage you. In fact, I'm going to probably blog it this weekend when I have time after the protest, maybe Sunday. I want to launch, I, hopefully we get the support. We need to launch people, and I want everybody to start doing it now. Uh, we need to contact everybody in your email list. And 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 help. It'll be helpful if you send them. You know, Google the numbers for uh, Border Patrol in Yuma, Arizona, uh, the uh, Department of Public Safety in Arizona, and call their phone lines. Uh, demand that Steve get his video cam back. Demand that the video, uh, the surve- full surveillance video, be released to the public. And we will and and give no rest for the wicked until we get results. And don't and, and tell them, you're not asking, you're demanding. Steve, it's actions like these Border Patrol that's pushing us ever so closer to, uh, well, we're already in it, uh, but the revolution going hot. It's already gone hot, actually, because they beat you down. And, you're, and along with the other people, I, I'm, I'm reading right now uh, on Infowars.com, Steve, uh, you talk about being tased, um, a judge... It's now ruled that it's okay to taser for DNA samples. It's legally permissible, a judge says, for police to zap a suspect with a taser to obtain a DNA sample as long as if it's done as if it's not done maliciously or to an excessive extent or with resulting injury. A county judge has ruled in the first case of this kind in New York State and possibly the nation. So there you go. The police want a DNA sample. They could tase you. My reaction, Steve, I'm speaking for myself, unless you want to concur, is that if, if you witness this kind of action by law enforcement people, what happened to Pastor Steve, the proper response of the American patriots is, if you're capable of not getting killed, to mob these officers. That's right. Mob them. Hey, we are to be secure in our personal effects, in person, and if the government won't protect you, Steve, if they don't protect their families, then we don't have a government. What we have is we have anarchy, and that's what we are. We're at anarchy, Steve. It's outrageous. What, what's the – obviously your church is behind you. Um, tell us about the support. Uh, I know Alex Jones did a great job in getting your information out, Freedom is Phoenix as well. Uh, which is also a great website uh, to find out what's going on. Uh, Pastor, uh, is the support continuing to pour in uh, letters, phone calls, or what? Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? For every ten positive emails I get, I only get one negative email. You know, from some some stooge, some puppet who uh, who wants to just live a life in a totalitarian government. You know, I mean, I'm getting tons of people saying that they support me. I, I think that the American people as a whole, they're not for this kind of treatment of anyone. They don't want law enforcement out torturing people and, and brutalizing people for no reason. But the sad thing is that the 10% that I've gotten that's been negative has come from predominantly Christians. And that's what I find unbelievable. Because to me, Christians should understand freedom and liberty more than anyone since the Bible is the book of liberty, you know, all throughout the Bible, you'll find, you know, references to freedom, liberty. If you look at the government that God had set up for the children of Israel after they came out of, you know, the bondage of Egypt, that was a very libertarian government. I mean, very minimal, very limited scope of a government. And, and yet Christians today seem to be drinking the Kool-Aid more than anyone of this Republican Party can do no wrong and... Rah, rah, George Bush, rah, rah, John McCain. And, and, and how can they support, you know, all these wars all over the world Absolutely. That, we shouldn't even, that we shouldn't even be involved in 
when the Bible is the one that tells us that God ordained separate nations, you know, and, and they're supporting America trying to run the whole world with a one-world government that's based in New York City. I You're, mean, think about it. Absolutely. If, 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 absolutely. If, 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 the, if the world were meant to be governed by the United States, you know, why did God ordain all these separate nations? Well, let me and just God say, ordained, Obama well, was just in Cairo. Okay, you know Obama, uh, AK, well, aka Barry Satoro, aka Obama. I just want to interrupt right here. Is you you brought up one world, new world order? Obama in his recent speech uh, this week in Cairo has even openly called for and stated a world order. How more? How much clearer can it get? That's that's about. I know they're not even trying to hide it anymore. And and the thing is. What what Christians need to understand is that God ordained separate nations, and he did not ever intend there to be a one-world government. You know, you'll only find, you know, that in the plans of the Antichrist. But, you know, in the Bible, God ordained separate nations, and we, as, as Americans, are fighting all these wars where the Congress of the United States did not declare war on another country. You know, we're over in Iraq, we're over in Afghanistan – enforcing United Nations resolutions. So we're not even fighting for America. We're fighting side by side with troops from scores of different nations enforcing, you know, United Nations resolutions. There's, I mean, did the Congress of the United States declare war in Iraq or Afghanistan? Correct me if I'm wrong. Absolutely uh, absolutely not. We're at an undeclared, uh, un, um, unconstitutional war. And, and the way I look at it, you know, look, God bless the troops, uh, even though they're, uh, they're blind and serving a Luciferian agenda. And we got a caller. Let me bring this caller in. Um, but let me bring this caller in. I just want to finish this thought. It, 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 hold on. Hold on. Okay. Um, they're serving, uh-huh. Hold on, Maria. Uh-huh. They're, holding a, they're, they're, they're serving a Luciferian agenda. They're serving a Luciferian uh-huh. agenda. And Am I talking to you, actually, or is that a type? Yeah, hold on, ma'am. Uh, and the bottom line is... Oh, it's you. All right, then. Hold on. What the troops are doing, uh, uh, what's happening to the troops, is no different than what we would be doing or will be doing. I didn't, I didn't ask you any troops. question. I'm not asking you to give me an answer. I was just trying to call in. Okay, okay, That's no all problem. I wanted. I'm not so comfortable with your guest tonight. Well, you know what? I'm not comfortable. Um, well, you, you know what? I'm not comfortable. Probably not so comfortable you know I'm not with comfortable with you. With you. I'm not comfortable with you. So goodbye. Uh, how's that? Uh, okay, I'm not comfortable with you, uh, uh, Maria. In fact, tell you what, I got something for you. Uh, you're a lady, so I won't pull the uh, uh, the Glock. So we'll just do this. Hold on. Goodbye. Oh, wait, let me double flush you because she sounded like she was from Britain. Goodbye. I'm not comfortable with her either. Uh, go ahead, uh, Steve. Uh, as I was saying before, that uh, idiot on the phone uh, called in. It's not comfortable. I'm not comfortable with her, so I hung up on her. It's my show, and uh, she don't like it. Well, she can tune in or tune out. Uh, well, Pastor, what the troops are doing, I mean the troops, the Iraqi uh, uh, insurgents are doing, they're not doing anything to Americans that we will, won't be doing to foreign troops it, when they come here on our soil, i.e., a Chinese invasion or U.N. troops rounding American citizens up in the FEMA death camps. They're, they're going to experience what our troops are experiencing now. Am I not correct? Well, you know what? The, the war in Iraq and, and the war in Afghanistan are not constitutional, and, and all they're doing – is fighting the, what the troops are doing. They're not fighting for America. They're fighting for the United Nations. They're fighting for the world government, and that's a fact. And and you can you can try to you know whitewash it and try to construe it that they're fighting to protect our freedom, but you know what? They're actually fighting to support the United Nations resolutions, and that's why they're fighting alongside all these other foreign troops. It's not an alignment of a couple of countries. It's the United Nations that's doing all these actions, that's making all these decisions. And, you know, I don't think that we as the American people have elected these United Nations representatives from all these countries. And so why are they, you know, sending our troops to go bleed and die for some cause that I don't think most Americans even believe in? 
Absolutely. And, 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 and you know, I really couldn't, and, and I don't mind saying this, and I don't care whether people like this or not. Go ahead. I couldn't care less what happens over there, okay? We ought to be staying at home. You know, instead of bringing democracy to Iraq and freedom to Iraq, why don't we bring freedom to the United States? Absolutely. By, what by about rid American of freedom? Excessive, yeah, all these excessive taxes, all this government regulation, infringement upon our Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights, infringement upon our Second Amendment rights, violations of the Eighth Amendment. Right. And we're worried about what's going on on the other side of the world. You know, we, we ought to be minding our own business and not trying to be a police force for the world. Exactly. And, well, and, 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 and you know, it's, it's unbelievable to me how, how Christians are just buying into this new world order. They're buying into the United Nations. They're buying into these wars that are not about America, that are about, you know, enforcing United Nations resolutions. I, I couldn't agree further. Ken, uh, before we go into break and go into our next guest, you have a question or comment for our guest, Ken? Just that the rapture is approaching quick. Hey, how'd you like that last guest that wasn't comfortable with our show, Ken? She's still there. Well, no problem. I, mean, I wasn't comfortable with her, so hey, you know. Uh, well, can, well, Pastor, golly, it's already an hour. Pastor, let me ask you: Can we uh, get you back in a couple weeks? Is that possible? Because this hour went by so fast, and I, <laughs> and uh, we're going in our second hour with our second guest. Can we get you back, Pastor? Sure, absolutely. Well, hey, before Pastor. we go, I want to ask your opinion. What is your opinion of the partial birth abortion um, uh, in Ab- uh, and abortion in Obama uh, uh, on, on the death industry? Is abortion the, uh, the modern-day Holocaust in America? Yeah, absolutely. And let, let me make this very clear. Abortion is murder. And, you know, I think that every single person who's involved in it should be tried for murder or conspiracy to commit murder or, or you know, an accomplice to murder. And, and people might say that that's radical, but there's nothing radical about someone who takes human life, you know, being executed and receiving the death penalty. That's straight out of the Bible. The Bible says, Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he men. Well, and it's, so well, it's, it's nothing clearly, short of murder. And, well, and, absolutely. And par- partial birth abortion is, is the most gruesome, sickest kind of murder that you can imagine on an innocent human being. Absolutely. And so Christians need to stand up and start calling a spade a spade and instead of just being so scared and afraid to really call this stuff out for what it is, they need to put the Holy Bible in their hand and say, hey, it's murder. Well, Pastor, we're not going to condone mur- uh, what, maybe what uh, the killer of Tiller did, but bottom line is it, it clearly shows a biblical principle in action that whatever you soweth, you shall reap, right? Absolutely. What happened with his death was that he reaped what he sowed. Now, I don't condone vigilanteism, but did he deserve what he got? Of course he deserved it and much more. And and the thing is, Christians have actually said to me and pro-life people said to me, oh, you know, isn't that sad that, that Mr. Tiller was murdered? Mr. Tiller was not murdered, okay? Now, again, I don't condone vigilanteism, and obviously that's not the proper channels – through which justice should be executed. Obviously, he should get a trial, just like every American should get a trial. But I'm sorry, he wasn't murdered. He was executed. Well, Pastor, and again, yeah, I'm, not condoning, I'm not condoning the, the channels that it came through. Right. And I'm not okay. condoning vigilanteism. But no, I don't feel bad. You know, I rejoice that, that he's gone from this earth and he's being punished in hell right now. Ken, go ahead. You're going to have to uh, thank Colder for that because he's the one that uh, uh, took him out of court. He was going to court, and then, uh, you know, we're dealing with the wrong people here. Well, we're dealing with an evil, the most evil regime ever to uh, walk the face of the planet. Pastor, before we go, do you, uh, you have a website uh, website that you'd like to plug? I understand your, your church has a website uh, where people can read about your ministry. I want you to uh, share that right now, Pastor. Sure. It's www.faithfulwordbaptist.org. And then I also personally have a political website, which is uh, the True Born Sons of Liberty, and that's www.truebornsons.com. Well, Pastor, I really, uh, again, I just want to thank you for uh, coming on the show tonight. And, um, again, we will get you back. Thank you for being on the front line uh, of uh, battle, uh, battling for the heart of this country. It's about time that people like you, Terry Brassie, and others stand up. 
Uh, I'll be kind. I'll be giving you a call uh, this weekend. Want to get you back on the show. Uh, we're going to be joined second hour. James Lau, organizer of the CNN uh, protest, multi-city protest this weekend in Chicago and Atlanta. With that, we're going to uh, be right back after this song on the front line. Uh, Pastor, thank you and God bless you, sir. Thank you. Likewise. <laughs> 